It's five o'clock in the morning, it's super quiet, and I'm off to a subscriber's house to install an EV charger. <laughs> It's been a little while since I've installed a Hypervolt, but apparently improvements have been made. So today, I'm gonna to take you through all of it. We've got a brand new consumer unit that's been installed in preparation for this. And we have a blank ready for the car charging circuit. So that's lucky I bought a Type A double pole RCB O with me. The other side of this wall, we have a downstairs bathroom, but I reckon that if I drill this at an angle, I'll be able to avoid coming in the bathroom and get straight outside. So why am I using a mains power drill? We'll touch on this a little bit later on in the video. Oh, hold on a second, think about it. This is that moment where you need to double check exactly where you are drilling. Perfect. If I can, I always like to drill into the building rather outside to prevent any brickwork from getting blown. And I also always start with a pilot 10 mil bit, start it on hammer and then finish it off on normal drill mode, which again prevents you from blowing anything inside or outside. Tidy or not tidy, let's have a look. This is a brand new consumer unit installation, which means obviously it's going to be dressed absolutely perfectly. Or not. What do you guys think about this one? Let me know in the comments. Here I'm drawing a nice straight line to prepare my cable clips. This is the first thing that I like to do in any job is get the cable in place. So with this one, the location of the charger is a little bit tricky because we have this and then the pebble dash here. And where I would normally mount it is basically slap bang here. Up here, it's going to be too high and my customer doesn't want it there. So I've got no choice really. I'm just going to put it a bit lower and just tuck it underneath this ridge. I'm using a 22mm nails here with the D-Line EV Ultra cable clips and I'm only firing into the mortar. If you fire into the brickwork, you're going to find that on your location it's going to blow it. So stick to the mortar and you'll be all good. First of all, it's got this nice tab to open it up which sometimes works, but no big deal. Then inside the box, you get your front cover and a drilling template. So take the drilling template off and put this in the van nice and safe so you don't scratch it. The Hypervolt comes in a space gray, a black and a white. My preference is a space gray. I think this is a really nice finish. You also get an installation guide if you haven't installed one of these before, make sure you have a good read of this. It will make the installation a lot easier than just guessing. I would advise that you get a mat for whatever workbench you're putting this charger on, just because and you don't want to hand it over damaged in any way. It's these little touches which makes you provide a good service. And the last thing in the box is this mounting bracket. Make sure you put this on the right way up. So the way this bracket works, is that you fix it to the wall and then that will slot underneath and it will clip on just like that and then you have a fixing screw there at the top. That ensures that there's no way any moisture is going to get in through any fixing holes that you make in the back of the unit. It's a good idea. One of the new things which I love that Hypervolt have introduced is captive screws. One of the things with any job you do outside is that if you drop the screws, it can be a bit of a nightmare to find them if you're working on like a gravel driveway, for example. So that is a really nice touch. Well done, Hypervolt. With this charger, you have the option of a back entry there to drill out. And you also have two bottom entry holes here. One which is suited for a 25 mil stuffing gland and the other one is suited for a 32. If you're running like a separate Cat5 to your charger rather than an EV Ultra, you can do like the 16 in there for the Cat5 and you can still put your 25 stuffer in there. I'm gonna put my 25 stuffer in the middle one anyway, just to keep the installation nice and tidy. Because I've got this lip here, I need to make sure that this doesn't intrude on it. So, I have clearance here so I can put this basically wherever I want. 
Also with the hypervolt you get a box of bits. Inside this box you get your CT clamp, you get your cable holster and also a bag of fixings and in this bag you're going to find a bolt that's bigger than the rest and this is what you need to fix the hypervolt to the bracket. But before you get carried away like I am here, make sure you drill your hole for your cable entry. This is called a deburring tool. Just run this around the edges and it will just give you a nice clean finish. And because I'm using EV Ultra cable today, with no armoured, I just need a stuffing gland. So just pop that in the bottom and nip it up. I have managed to burn out two battery SCS drills this year so far, which is why I will not buy another one. A few things that I like about the Hypervolt is, one, the customer service for Hypervolt is better than other manufacturers. They do have a service available 365 days a year, which is really handy. And as an installer, I found that the response that you get from Hypervolt is superior to others. The Hypervolt is also imminently available at Ovo charge anytime, which makes this a pretty good choice and option to offer your customers. They also have a new multi-mode schedule option, which basically allows customers to set up a charging schedule for both day and time. So with others, you have to select the days and all the times are the same. With the Hypervolt, you can charge at different times, so on a weekend at different times and during the week. They've also introduced something called the Adaptive Replay, which means that if your Wi-Fi goes offline for any reason, when it comes back online, all the information on the charge will basically be regenerated and you'll be able to see everything. And typically, British summertime, it started to rain. Luckily, this is a super quick charger to install. This charger is also now fully compatible with solar. We have a couple of CT connection options here. So you can do your grid management and your solar. So this is turning into be a real competitor, this charger. And you have plenty of room to work in as well, which is really nice. So you can give your cables a little bit of a swoop. So you've got some play in case you ever change it. And then just here, you have your CT connections. And what you get is this little connector here. Which you put just one pair of your Cat5 into. I'm using brown and white today. And what I do is I don't cut off the cores that I'm not using and I don't put heat shrink on them. Yes, heat shrink looks tidier. However, if my customer decides to get solar in the future, you have gotta get that heat shrink back off and it's far easier just to take a little bit of tape off. There's nothing wrong with that. And then if we look at the instructions, on this connector, you have a white and a black color. So if we look in the manual, I'm always referring to manuals just to make sure nothing's changed. For me, the brown will go in the black terminal and the white will go in the white. So whatever pair you're using, basically use the color and the white core to go in the white one. And then just pop that into CT1 terminal. And that's that bit done. As of the 15th of August, Hypervolt will be beginning formal beta testing for the Octopus Intelligent Go integration. Octopus will select a few hundred eligible customers that will be sent invites through the Octopus app to join them on Octopus Intelligent Go through the Hypervolt device. Keep an eye out for your invite and by the end of the year, it will be available to everyone. Once you're at this sort of stage, it's time just to get all your dead testing done and then your live testing. I'll run through the testing in a different video. I wanna keep a tutorial, a testing tutorial separate to this. Referring back to the Hypervolt instructions, they recommend that the connections are done up to 1.8 newton meters. So make sure you do that. And they also recommend that stranded cable has ferrules on them. The cable I'm using, scrap man. The cable I'm using is solid stranded. So it's debatable whether you need it or not because some people have said that you can pull them off. Yes, you can if you yank them, I guess, but once they're done up, there's no getting them off. So I'm gonna stick them on anyway, because I like a ferrule. And then for the load curtailment, we have a dull diagram here, which matches one just in this corner. And I wanna limit this installation to 60 amps, which it's already on, so that's good. Now I'm ready to put this cover on. Needs to be connected into this little connector here. 
just like that you'll hear it click and then you can just button this up and then finally in that little bag i showed you earlier you'll have six more screws this connector here just pushes straight into this and then you have two either side to nip up the ct clamp must be placed after the meter on the line conductor in the direction of the current flow as labeled up there and then finally you need to mount the holster it says in the instructions to do this first it's personal preference i like to do it after to see where the cable falls this is a five meter tethered cable it's also available in a seven and a half and a ten when you turn it on for the first time, you're going to get a blue light. You need to download the Hypervolt Installers app, set up an account, and then you need to connect it to the internet and override the random delay. Otherwise, testing this is going to take ages. Once you've run through all your testing and the app's all set up, just hand it over to your client. Job done. I'm going to get out of the rain. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel.